May I come in? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. My name is Charles Winter. I'm here to represent the men to which you are discussing terms for. My employer tells me that you find a few minor uh, hiccups, if you will, in our contract. <laughs> As you know, I'm simply here just to straighten those out so we don't have to involve any uh, nasty lawyers, you know. <laughs> yes, actually quite a few hiccups. I was thinking we could start with... I'm sorry to interrupt you, but could I bother you for a glass of milk? It took me a little while to get here and I am simply parched. <laughs> sure. One second. So, the first problem I found was at the beginning of the contract. In the first statement, it says that by signing this contract, I'm confirming justification towards all actions performed by your associates that have offended me in any way. Well, we are very excited to begin working with you, but it has been brought to our attention that we have wronged you in some way. Well, in order for us to move forward in our relationship, you must tell us that you haven't passed our actions, or <laughs> other actions of our employees, so that we can start this partnership with a clean slate, huh? See, that's the thing. I don't necessarily want to justify your actions. Do you think you could specify what actions you find unjustifiable, Mr. Smith? Well, uh... For starters, many associates of yours have caused damage to property of mine. See, I own a large portion of businesses, and on many occasions, those businesses have been held up at gunpoint by people in your gang. Yeah, well, we don't like to use the term gang. We much rather use the term syndicate. What's the difference? Well, um, let's say, for instance, all of your businesses fail, and of course, I do not wish this upon you, but for the sake of the argument, let's say this, this terrible scenario happens. Now, all of your money, and your power, and your social status is gone. Just like that. And you decide you need to make money. And the only way to make money in this cruel world is through crime. So you go out and you find this nice little gang called, uh, I don't know, the Skins. They aren't just gonna let you into their gang. You have to earn it. So they start they start tormenting you and, and torturing you as your initiation into the gang until you just can't take it anymore. That would be a gang. Understood? Yeah, I guess. Now, let's say all of your businesses start to become extremely prosperous and you have so much money, you have no idea what to do with it. But but for some odd reason, you keep wanting to make more money. So you go out again, and, and, you, and you find a meth cook and a weed farm, and, and you hire workers to sell your, your products, and you hire a network of robbers and thieves, and you, my friend, are at the head of it. That would be a syndicate. We pride ourselves on knowing the difference. <laughs> That's very interesting and all, but it seems that we still need to solve the problem of the ratification clause. Well, as a syndicate, we do have many subsidiaries, and being as large as we are, we sometimes find those subsidiaries, to, to, you know, having control over them, we sometimes find it difficult. You know? We are trying everything in our power to keep those subsidiaries in line. Now, we hope this won't affect our relationship going forward. We hope that we can pursue a partnership here. <laughs> we can move past these small blemishes. Can you give your word that you're doing everything in your power to keep these subsidiaries under your control? Well, why, of course. Once we partner, if any of your businesses get damaged, it will directly hurt us.
the next matter is somewhat bigger. It says here, and in quote, in signing this agreement, the affiliate binds himself to a partnership with the existing associate lasting in perpetuity. When I originally read this, I was unsure of what perpetuity meant, but then I looked it up. Basically, what this is saying is that your syndicate owns me forever. Well, we would like to shy away from the term owning or ownership, if that would be possible. And essentially, what this is saying here is that we'd like to keep an ongoing fashion in our relationship until we feel the time is right, that we have exhausted all benefits of working together, at which point we will exterminate our partnership. So, essentially, you own me forever. <laughs> Again. I would like to emphasize we will not be owning you. You expressed interest in a partnership with us due to various amounts of vandalizing acts done upon your businesses. Your businesses! This clause simply states that we are reciprocating those feelings and we wish to keep a partnership and an ongoing motion until we feel the time is right to end our agreement. That is all. So I have no say in when I wish to end this partnership? If you find our services to be less than you expected, you may notify us and we'll try to find a way to improve upon our relationship or we can discuss your release. What if I find these terms unruly and decide not to sign? Now, you express interest in a partnership with us. We took time to write a specific contract to ensure you with protection and you would provide us with services, whether it be from you or your, your businesses or a specific safe house. Either way, my boss would not be very happy to hear that you are going to spit all over his contract because you are slightly skeptical. <laughs> I presume those are all of the problems you have with our arrangement. Actually, no. This one is a minor one, but it seems a bit illegal. If we thought something was illegal, Mr. Smith, we wouldn't do much business at all now, would we? Yeah, I understand that, but in general, this doesn't seem like the type of thing I should sign. Okay, why don't I read it? All clauses in this contract, as well as all future business deals made between the affiliate and the aforementioned association, shall remain private between two parties. This includes, but is not limited to, all monetary transactions, any and all deals involving a specified location, anything else the association decides to be unfit for third party ears. I, I, I don't see the problem here. I don't have a problem with that. Keep reading. All information disclosed to any third party by the affiliate must first be cleared by the associate. Well, this just simply means that I know what it means. It means that I can't have a conversation with anyone without talking to you first. This shouldn't be too much of a problem, it really is quite simple. <laughs> Our syndicate has many secrets, and wish, and if he shares any of these secrets with you, we wish that to remain only with you. No, that's what a normal confidentiality agreement states. That last part that you tried to slip in there means that I can't talk to my mom about online shopping unless I run it by you people first. Are you an art fan, Mr. Smith? What? <laughs> it's a simple question, really. Do you enjoy art? How does this have anything to Please do with Please just my... answer the question, Mr. Smith. <sighs> well, there was a really... Excuse me one second. <laughs> There was a really a brilliant artist by the name of Vincent van Gogh. I'm sure you've heard of him as he's quite famous. During his lifetime, not many people appreciated his work. In fact, he only sold one painting in his entire lifetime. Do you know what the name of that painting was? No, I don't. The name of the painting was called The Red Vineyard. Now, the painting is so simple yet so extraordinary. Van Gogh was one of the most tortured people ever, or at least the most famous tortured person. <laughs> anyway, you probably already know that Van Gogh chopped off a certain body part. Do you know what that was? His ear? Bingo. Now, most people think that he chopped off his entire ear when in reality he only cut off a little bit of his lobe. 
but it is a lot more fun to think that he chopped off his entire ear. <laughs> anyway, this tortured, tortured man drove himself mad to the brink of complete insanity. I mean, considering he lopped off his own ear. <laughs> Do you know what he did when he became this mad version of himself? I can't say that I do. He checked himself into a mental health center. <laughs> now, I ask you this. Why would someone who is truly insane check themselves into an asylum? <laughs> well, it's probably because Rhetorical he... Rhetorical question, Mr. Smith. <laughs> now, the answer that I like to think of in this case is that Van Gogh wasn't insane at all. This, this tortured man drove himself into believing he was this insane character that he thought himself to be. <laughs> he, he thought he was a danger to others and to himself, so he checked himself into an insane asylum where he continued to make brilliant pieces of work. Everything this man has done is an inspiration to, to so many people, and to myself as well. The scenario just goes to show you how powerful the human mind is. It's it's, it's incredible. What does this have anything to do with confidence? I'm terribly sorry to cut you off again, but I bother you for another uh, glass of your delicious milk? I do believe this ends our discussion on the matter. You never even finished addressing my problem with the confidentiality agreement. I propose we move on to the, the further stages of the agreement. Shouldn't we finish resolving my problem with the confidentiality agreement? I'd like to move on to any further problems you have before we discuss the problems that you've come across with confidentiality. I'd rather go through and solve them as we go, because seeing as there are quite a few of them, Why don't we just skip to the end of the agreement? But I- Please, I would simply like to discuss something. What is it? Read the clause of repudiation, please. In the event that the affiliate finds this agreement unruly or is unwilling to sign due to problems found inside the text, all of the following will become effective immediately. All agreements made in this contract will become null and void if the final agreement is not confirmed. And all relations between two parties will cease and will not become active once more until the agreement is signed. Do you understand completely all these terms and circumstances? Yes. And you understand by not signing this contract, all further deals with standing our contract and your agreement shall become inactive? Yes. Well then, I'm answering the final question, Mr. Smith. As of this very minute, as of right now, are you willing to sign the agreement? Unfortunately, no. I'm gonna have to talk to a lawyer. We really do not like lawyers, especially ones that are looking at our agreements, but very well, we will be in touch. Thank you.
You know, it really is a shame things didn't work out. Those lawyers of yours. They're gonna tell you to do a, a bunch of things, but one of those things they're gonna tell you to do is not be tempted by our persuasion, but one thing they don't know is that our methods of persuasion are <laughs> above average. You know, you can really apply everything to Vince Van Gogh in life. I'll give you a few days to reconsider! My boss would not be very happy to hear that you are going to spit all over his contract because you are slightly skeptical. <laughs> That last part that you tried to slip in there means that I can't talk to my mom about online shopping unless I run it by you people first.